Welcome back to The Grade Cricketer, brought to you by ACCO, India's leading digital insurance company. Today, Pez, we are talking about a famous South African series victory. We've got to give some love to our Protea brethren and sisterin and herein and therein, and there they went. Uh, that's, uh, mate, that's a serious win for South Africa, serious business. That's some good gear from then. Mate, absolutely. Protea fire all the way, and... Yeah, without getting too like existential too early, it's it is really good to see other countries playing well outside the the self appointed big boys and financially appointed big boys. Uh, I, I know it's disappointing for India; they were favourites and they should hang their heads in shame for a long time. The Asian century is over; it's the yeah. dawn of the, Af- the African century, and I've always said that. Uh, nevertheless, well done, South Africa. It's really good gear to see because emotionally it doesn't affect me, so I can say that as a neutral. So uh, two days ago, uh, India started that day 57 for two. They got rolled for 190, even though Punt scored this amazing 100. Today's game, they started, one, in South Africa, started 101 for two. They needed 111 to win, and it was an absolute, well, they just cruised it. They just P&O cruised it, one by seven wickets in the end, as they did in the last game. So once again, I was wrong because I thought that they, wouldn't, they couldn't do it back to back. So... Let's get into the first thing. And in many ways, it's a great explainer that I'm going to tie them all into the same thing. South Africa do it on their dick. You've got to be doing it on something. And this time, they're literally standing on their penises. Mate, and we've said this. (laughs) (laughs) Your conscience is reacting to your external self. (laughs) Fucking hell. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that, that is putting it in great terms. You can't simply say South Africa won comfortably. You have to say that they did it no. on their dick. What does it even mean? <laughs> to, on your dick. He's standing on a long penis. Oh, God. Spent a bit of time together lately. Uh, blind leading the blind, these blokes. Both as bad as each other. Uh, yeah. Fuck it up. Th- th- you're right. They won both games comfortably. I mean, the 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 scoreline, I think, belied the difficulty of that day. Boomer was throwing everything at it and he was swinging it both ways the wicket was still very bouncy and as we were saying last night on the live stream it just had some behavior about it it had some behavior i'm not saying behavioral issues but just at the extreme end of the behavior spectrum you know it's like a like a child you need to encourage them cultivate their passion there's nothing wrong with them don't give them any meds don't try and dampen them down just let you but you have to actually guide them correctly and i'd say the same thing about the newlands wicket and south africa knew how to deal with the behavior of that wicket better than india and i think that was with the bat and i think that was ultimately the difference you know they were able to um ride their way to the win they were uh, hitting balls that might seem risky through cover uppishly but able to do it they were um welcoming india straying onto their pads india went searching for wickets as the run uh, rate or the, the, the runs needed diminished and they got there with only yeah having only lost one wicket which was keegan peterson uh india threw everything at it uh including the verbals wasn't enough yeah so india only created three chances re- like three three moments in the in the in the a session than a bit that they played, literally session and a tiny bit because they came out after lunch and they just fucking, Bavuma sort of got going. Pajara dropped Peterson really badly. That was the sort of the, the most obvious chance. And mm-hmm. then there was a review for a court behind of Van der Dussen. And then Coley thought he might have another pop um, just in case his cred hadn't uh, dropped enough. That's him to the credit card services that's been promoted from Supersport, which we mm-hmm. work for now, obviously. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Coley was sledging Van der Dussen. He said, are you sledging a guy five years younger than you? <laughs> referring to him sledging punt in the previous test match. Mate, Boomer's trying to physically fight a child. <laughs> mm. like in American terms, Marco Jansen's only just qualified as an adult. He can only just drink now. That's that's right. And then there was a there was a final LBW review uh, of uh, Takua where it was the umpire's call, just clipping the top of leg stump, uh, given not out to umpire's call. So, I mean, apart from that, yeah, there, there was some beating of the bat, as you'd expect throughout this entire series. But apart from that, they didn't really create a lot. I think the damage was done yesterday. Yep. And I I actually think that, like, today's performance is a direct a direct reflection of what happened last night and the conversation that now the cricket world's been talking about in that the leader of the team, once you, like, walk up to a stump mic and just sort of, like, announce to your team as the leader to be like, the television company is cheating... Mm. <laughs> 
What does that do for the mindset of the team to try and win the game the next day when it's just like, oh, fuck, you know, this isn't fair, you know? And I think it's a fine balance because I think, like, especially under Shastri and Coley, they've led this Indian team like the world's against us and we're just going to fucking come out guns blazing and we're so aggressive. And that's got them to this point, I think. That's, that's inarguable that there's been successes through that style of leadership. But... It's just, it's a real fine tipping point there where, like, it just changes the mentality where, where like, you can just throw your hands up, you know? Like, a, a, a seemingly wrong decision goes your way, even though it wasn't wrong. <laughs> and then it's just like, well, fuck, what are we even here for? It's, it's just that style of leadership, I think, uh, is a direct... Well, what we saw yesterday, it directly affects today, I think. Um, so, yeah. Oh, mate, well, look, I don't know about you. I'm just an internet guy with corn chips uh, who eats corn chips, yeah. but... Um I actually talk more about corn chips than I eat them, and which is a shame because I, I yeah. would like to get more corn chips into my life. Nevertheless, of course. Uh, when Collie <laughs> carried on like that yesterday, I think that uh, he he reveals the pressure that he's under. He reveals yep. that he believes that they're on their way to losing. It, it, they're the actions of somebody desperate uh, and starting mm. to look for reasons why they're not winning. And you're so, you're totally right about a fine line because uh, Coley has also driven a certain aggression with Indian within Indian cricket, and Ravi right. Shastri has as well. That I think has been welcomed by Indian cricket, has maybe been needed in terms of their position in world cricket as well. But when you behave like that and start to look for excuses for losing, uh, that sends a message to your team. And again, I'm the corn chips guy here, but like. Uh, what mm. what do younger guys around Virat Kohli think when he starts yelling into a stump mic? Shadows lengthening on <laughs> the end of the, the the third day of a very crucial test match. It, it goes from being yep. a guy who plays with fire and passion uh, and consideration to a guy who's playing recklessly and impetuously. Mm. And mm. Uh, it sets a bad example for them. And it also says to them that he's <sighs> under pressure and he's not in control anymore. Uh, it, it's not... It's not his first rodeo behaving like that as well. Yeah. And I said during the stream last night, like losing the game will make yesterday's behavior look even worse. If they go on and win today, if Boomer kind of gets away, all the chances uh, go to hand, etc. People will start to say, well, that's how we play. You know, we sort of ride the energy of Virat Kohli and we get more results than we don't. But I think it went the other way, you know, and, and I think mm. you're totally right. Yeah. And, Unfortunately or not, I mean, look, we've got questions about Pajara and Ajinki Rahane, but look at the look at the contrast in the way Rahane led his side mm. to that win over Australia in a similar context, you know, an unprecedented win, mm. an unconquered place. It came from intelligence. You know, it came from composure. And as and other teams are yeah. starting to show us now in modern sport generally, you don't have to be a coat to win mm. you don't have to be a coat to be the most tough guy that you can be um you can be fiery you can be strong you can be intimidating without being a coat and without carrying on and i think look virat Kohli's is a man under pressure he hasn't scored 100 for a mm. long time he's not the virat Kohli of, of old india are lacking a big boy batter at the moment uh he's just had a kid. Who knows how he's sleeping? I'd definitely be now, brother. You know, and I sympathise with him. I don't know. <laughs> there's a bit. There's a lot. There's a lot going on for him, and he's impatient. Uh, and uh, he, his captaincy doesn't come off looking good uh, with that situation and and not winning the series. That's right, mate. No wins at RCB. No wins in the World Cups. ICC tournament records not very good. You mm. know, the, I'm not pulling all the blame, but there's no, just there's bit just of, I, bit of BCCI I think it's stuff as well. There's some very reasonable questions over like his legacy as captain, and then you see this kind of stuff, and it's like now, 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 now here's something I'm going to test you with, Pez, if you're going to agree with me on this one. You know that, you know that, you know that Hitler bunker scene where he's just losing know. his shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not comparing Virat Kohli to Hitler, but. <laughs> <laughs> if someone on Reddit wants to make the meme where, like, you know, Hitler's losing his shit and he's blaming super sport and, uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a whole nation against 11 guys. If someone wants to put that together, mm. uh, you know, I don't have time for that, but, yeah, uh, you know, that'd that. be good. All right. 
Um, let's get into. <laughs> let's get uh, into. So, uh, so that bit players. where that where the like the uh, the underling comes up and starts giving him information and stuff. <laughs> that's going to be like the averages of the in- Indian players through the series, like. <laughs> And the collapses. Rahan, yeah. I couldn't get it off the square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, players of the series, players. We've got to give we've got to give some love to uh, to the Proteas here because I don't think we have spoken about them enough. Um, but um, Keegan Peterson literally is player of the series. He gets two hundred and seventy six runs, a real breakthrough. Uh, we've spoken on we've spoken on Patreon this week, Pez, uh, for hashtag us to see Fridays about um, PK and putting them in certain places. But, you know, South Africa's got their own KP now, their real KP. The other KP played for England. This is the real KP number three. Mm. He, I think he's had a sensational series. Marco Janssen has had a breakout series. And I think for South Africa as well, this is a really – this could be a really um, emboldening series for Dean Elgar's captaincy, especially, like, in the turmoil of South African cricket generally, obviously the decock thing, uh, amongst other things, not just in Test cricket, but in, in you know, just the loss of players, generally the coal pack stuff. But Dean Elgar to lead a fairly inexperienced team, especially batting-wise, against against this very, very good Indian team to win the, this series, even at home, and the way he's performed and the way he's out captains the opposition, I think this could be, like, a... Uh, a really, uh, a really powerful moment for for him as captain. So that, those those for me are the three South African guys that have really um, elevated themselves in Test cricket. I had, I had, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Marco Janssen came through. I mean, I thought Temba Bavuma was excellent as well. Just to add on to what you said, he he didn't yep. fail in yep. any game. Uh, he mm. he always contributed. He look, I mean, he he was he batted much better than I had given him credit for beforehand and those those yep. 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s in low scoring games were invariably sort of 250 was quite competitive very very um helpful and you know he's obviously a great leader a man of experience as well in that side so yeah i mean from india's mm. side pretty hard to go past uh jaspreet Bumrah again just because consolidating his position i think is one of the top two quicks in the world so yeah, but but I, I agree. Ke- Keegan Peterson was the standout player in this series, consistent across all tests. Two hundred and seventy six runs at forty six. He was the prized wicket by the end, and ultimately got them home in the decider. I mean, he played really well in the second test as well. But to, to he missed out on a hundred here, and he, you could tell he was really disappointed. But uh, mm-hmm. to to, an- to anchor it with eighty odd runs against a. Uh, more than boisterous Indian team who were playing against the entire nation of South Africa. To be fair, uh, uh, you know mm. that is a that's a pretty fortifying <laughs> knock for him. He he's definitely announced himself. He's come out of nowhere. I mean, Keegan Peterson and Marco Janssen. Who the fuck are these guys? World beaters. Marco yeah. Janssen's younger than Cameron Green. Uh, yep. Pretty 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 good to see. Pretty good to see. Uh, I think I think uh, the Lord Takua uh, has also enhanced his reputation. I don't think mm. he had like a standout necessarily, but he did he did enough again to be like this guy's a serious performer test yeah. level. But I wonder, Pez, uh, in terms of players of the series in a negative aspect, I wonder if this is the end for Rahane and Pajara. I look at their numbers and they're not necessarily particularly poor in the context of the series. Uh, you know, hardly any scores above two fifty in the tire in the entire series. They both got fifties. They didn't push on, but no one did really in this series. It was only two hundred scored in the entire series. Um, both Indians. And um, but I wonder when they play their next test series, which is against um, they got Sri Lanka in February and March, um, and then Australia at the end of the year. I, I, I wonder if it's time to actually cycle cycle out but then <laughs> there's also a bigger problem about what does that mean for Coley's leadership as well on the team because you take out those two experienced guys does Coley have more power is that what this team needs I mean I'm not sure I mean Rohit will probably come back into the side as well obviously but um but uh, but uh, yeah I mean my, my broader question is I wonder if this is the end for for Rahane and Pajara yeah and look I know you had as a third thing where to for India I mean that's the um and for South Africa I mean that's the that's the main talking point now. Uh, you you mm. could always carry Pajara and Rahane or see their value to the side so long as that side was winning because you could yep. always ask yourself, even in the absence of some big boy hundreds, etc. which let's face it, when it's India playing, your number three and number five needs to be a big boy or pretty close to a big boy. Uh, and but, but, but while they were winning, you could always ask, look, what are they contributing in the dressing room? How helpful are they if you're at Coley? There's a lot of intangibles there that senior guys do bring to the side. They they are fond of a helpful uh, 
contributory innings when the side is under pressure as well, uh, especially Pajara. But having lost the series now, you can't make that argument that they they have other intangible qualities to bring. Knowing mm. India as I do, <laughs> I'd be surprised if they sort of gave him the red carpet uh, sort of walk off together. Mm. And if anyone's going to go first, it's probably going to be Rahane, I would have thought. Mm. So, yeah. look, I, I would imagine it, just because there's so much uh, supply coming through from Indian cricket as well. Yeah. It's you know it's time it's time to bring them through. You've got you've just got so many guys in the wings. Like I mean, Rohit Sharma didn't play in this series, but yeah, Shubman Gill, Prithvi Shaw, Shreyas Iyer, Sky. Uh, I mean, even Vahari batted excellently this series, but he's the mm. he's always seems he's the perennial next cab off the rank. He's twenty eight, mm. so he's he's in he's at his peak. He's coming into his peak. There are guys mm. ready to go, and if you've got a couple of easier series coming up, let's get them in with great respect to Mafioso. Um, just in the same theme as where to next, let's talk about South Africa. They've got two test matches against New Zealand in New Zealand in, in Feb, then that, which I think is going to be really good. Then they've got home to Bangladesh. They've got three tests in England later this year. Then um, nice. that's after the IPL, obviously, and the T20 World Cup. So there's lots to happen here. You think as well, you add... Now, their, their bowling is their strength, but you add North They come here, here as well in the summer. Who, They're here next... Like they've, they've got a they lot coming here. up. That's right. That's right. Um, and they, I know Graham Smith was talking about some bubble fatigue because he's also announced t- t- today, Graham Smith, that England and Australia will tour South Africa in 2023 next year. Um, those cancelled tours that happened just at the beginning of COVID, um, that cost uh, Cricket South Africa $4 million US dollars. So um, they'd be pretty keen to recoup that, I would have thought. But yeah, mate, it, I, there's, there's lots to like about the South African team. I think their batting is going to be weak, especially away from home. But you add Nokia into the team, it's like, oh, that's... Not many runs being scored against them, I reckon. Mate, I feel like it's a golden period for bowlers generally, you know? Every time you think, yeah. like, oh, Australia's got the best bowlers, you just go around the world. Like, I mean, there's a lot of good, quick, a lot of good, quick mm. sort of trios rolling around. Mm. And uh, South Africa bringing Nokia back, mate, and because like, you want that depth as well. What are you looking at there? Rabat and mm. Nokia is as good a duo as anyone. That's fucking, you, you're going mm. with them on NBA Jam. You know, the equivalent more often oh, yeah, than not, yeah, yeah. like yeah. uh Ngidi, 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 Jansen, Jansen, Olivia, Ngidi, like, yeah. yeah, not 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 bad. Uh so yeah, got, like, mate, I'd just want to see a strong South Africa storm around and Australia going there next year. Man, I'm lipping, licking my chops at that. If we got the ability to go over there, <laughs> mate, I'll, that'd be incredible. Just the just the Shel- Springfield Shelbyville stuff would be unbelievable. Hell yeah. And I can see my twin as well. Faf. Um, hashtag RCDC brought to you by Akko. Nick Cross said, hashtag RCDC with Steve Smith and Ross Taylor taking wickets. Is it time to bring back the era of top order batters having a novelty roll of the arm? Noting that Tendulkar, Saywag and Dada have 118 test wickets between them. That's some good numbers, Nick. Um, but Coley is currently stuck on zero. We have to ask whether coach sending down some right arm mediums is, is the missing link between India's golden age of batting and the current Asian century. R.I.P. Or alternatively, is the Asian century, R.I.P., all about specialisation and the efficient division of labour such that sending kids the message they should they should both bat and bowl would mean less videos of six-year-olds with perfect 360-degree stroke play batting with a plastic stump? Fine question, Nick. Yeah, should we see more blokes just having roll armor, take them, take them back to the old days? Number like numbers eight, nine, ten, eleven, who like literally cannot bat, so they're proper tail enders. I don't want to score number eight scoring forty fives. I want to see like I want to see blokes that who can't bat, and I want to see captains who look. No, uh, I want to see batsmen who look very small when they get to the crease because you appreciate how big actual bowlers are. I want to see more of that so I can relate to this game. Yeah, there well, seems to be a. A big movement among our commentators, the commentators, commenters, and they are commentators too, I suppose. Yeah. For yeah, like novelty bowling. So I had a few questions like this now, or missing the sort of medium pacer or the slow medium pacer. I think there's a a push away from just the athlete, from the robot athlete grown in a lab uh, chemically to something a little <laughs> bit more human, and I kind of like it. It's it's like it's yeah. sort of akin to the idea of every team or every event in the Olympics or team in cricket carrying one amateur so you can make the contrast between how good the players actually are and then just what a lay person is like. So I'd prefer to go all the mm. way. Why don't you just get a fourth grader into every test side? You have to carry one fourth grader in every test side mm. just to um, actually test out the depth of the nation as well, you know? Because you might get yep. these teams that have a... Like, like I mean, 
then we'd see the end of the fucking Kiwi century, you know? They can actually get these guys in there. The, the top team is pretty good, but how's twos, threes, fours going for New Zealand cricket? <laughs> get a fourth grade Kiwi in there. I don't know. I, and, I, and I think that's when you'll see the depth of Indian cricket. I reckon their fourth graders are starting to hit them pretty well, and they're only six years old. <laughs> <laughs> something to look at in the future hey we'll see you guys on the internet about seven more times today thanks for everyone who joined the live stream last night that was great fun and uh see you guys right here on youtube cheers